Now you probably have your transmission apart for one of three reasons. It's either grinding, it's popping out of gear, or it's making noise. I just wanna take you guys through some details and some things to look for when you're rebuilding your transmission and what you need to replace versus what you don't need to replace. I got a lot of people wanting to replace parts that don't need to be replaced. What I'm gonna focus on in this video is talking about the engagement teeth right here, an actual gear teeth, as well as how to determine if those are worn out or not. Also, I wanna show you the things you can do to a gear that has some wear that you can save without ruining it even further. I'll also leave a link below to a rebuild manual where it talks about what I'm about to show you guys. I mainly rebuild Tremec five and six speeds, but this information will work with any cone clutch synchronized manual transmission for the most part. Now I often hear people, if they have a grind, they like to change the oil first in the transmission to see if that's gonna somehow magically make the uh, fiber material on the synchronizers come back. I've never seen somebody change the oil in a transmission to solve a grind issue. And I wanna show you why the damage cannot be undone from a grind or a pop out. If you guys want more information about synchronizers and stuff, I'll leave a, a link to a video below. I tear down a whole transmission. I talk a little bit about synchronizers and the wear and how they look on the gears. I'll leave the link below if you wanna check out that video. So say you have a grind and second gear. We can already say that the synchronizer is toast. The next thing that's gotta get damaged is the engagement teeth on the gear and the engagement teeth on the slider. So completely taking the synchro out of the equation, let's take a look at these engagement teeth. Now, ideal engagement teeth will look sort of like this. They have a nice point to the edge. It's not flattened out. This one has very, very minimal wear on it. So these teeth can be saved. They can be cleaned up, no problem. This gear is almost as good as new. The next thing that's gonna happen to these teeth just over time with shifting is there's gonna be a little burr that rises on these teeth. I don't know if you can hear that, but I can feel my nail stopping on that tooth and I can feel the burr on it. So I'm gonna show you guys what I do to just kiss that tooth, get rid of that burr and what it looks like. I'm just using a Dremel here with a little cut off disc. Now this is a bit exaggerated because this gear has almost no wear on it. There's almost no burr on those engagement teeth. You most likely will have a bigger burr on your tooth, but it will vary. I just wanted to give you a basic idea of the process. And it's important to note that you only want to take away the raised material and not the base material. That's literally all it takes. No more nice and smooth edge there. My nail doesn't stop anymore. That's all you need to remove. You don't need to go crazy. What you don't wanna do is grind away into the tooth and grind the material away. I see that sometimes and it's not something you wanna do. You wanna take as little material off this tooth as possible. That's what a healthy engagement tooth looks like. Now, if we take a look at the same gear, but with heavily worn engagement teeth, you can see what a worn synchronizer or abuse and just hard shifting will do to these engagement teeth. And it gets to the point where these get so flattened out that it'll cause the transmission to pop out of gear. It won't stay in gear. And let me tell you, all this material that's been shredded and grinded off here is gonna end up going through your transmission. Eventually, hopefully it'll make it to the magnet, but this is gonna cause more damage and no amount of changing the oil is going to put that material back on this gear. And here's a good comparison of them up face to face here. And you can see the difference and all that material that's missing on that tooth. I would not take the chance at reusing this gear. Now let's take a look at the slider. Now with a grinding gears, that synchro is supposed to slow down this gear to match the speed of the gear it was coming out of to make a smooth synchronized change. And when that synchronizer is gone, the only thing slowing down this gear is the engagement teeth banging up against the engagement teeth on this gear. And that's why the material is grinding itself away. And the same thing 
usually happens to the slider. It really depends on how long it's been grinding. You can see that these teeth are very heavily flattened out and there's not much of a point left. You can see right here, all that material that's just been grinded away. And if we look at this side, it's a little better, way better actually, but there's still some roundness to it. Uh, this side could probably be saved and cleaned up the burrs, but the fact that this side is just too far gone, you're gonna have to replace the slider. Now, looking at this gear, you'll notice that these engagement teeth look like they're worn out at first glance. You can see how there's kind of missing material on this edge and the points kind of toward the left of the tooth. That's actually not where, this is just how the tooth was designed. If you're unfamiliar, it's your first time doing this, you may think that that's where, but it's actually just the design of the tooth. There's nothing wrong with this gear. Maybe a slight burr on the edge like the gear I just showed you, but that's just something to keep in mind and to look for. This is out of a 3650 out of a Mustang. And there you go. So with dog teeth, to summarize, we want a nice point at the end. We don't want any big chips and flattened edges on the face of the tooth. Nice pointy tooth, something to look for, as well as the dog teeth on the slider. So if it's making noise like a gear whine, it's normally the contact pattern on the gears on the main shaft to the counter shaft. And it's either that you replace the gear with a uh, used gear or a new gear that was not within specs. It wasn't cut the same as the OE gear and it's just not meshing happily with the counter shaft. Or it was ran low on oil and at that point there's not much you can do to come back from that damage. And another reason is your bearing preload could be out of spec. So this counter shaft could be sloppy inside the transmission and that could also cause some gear noise. In some cases, gear noise is just something we have to live with because Tremec does not support their older transmissions. They only really keep up with their new stuff. So we have to kind of deal with uh, aftermarket overseas parts that sometimes aren't accurate and some sometimes they can cause some noise. There's only so many available replacement parts. So depending on your model transmission, if you can get OEM parts, stick with the OEM parts. All right, now let's talk about the actual gear teeth themselves. And it's pretty much the same uh, idea. No sharp edges, any minor chips along the outside edges or the top edge is okay. It can be cleaned up, but the further that you get in the actual contact patch into the root of the tooth, that's when you will have failures and that's when you need to replace your gear. All right, now here's an example of a obviously completely destroyed counter shaft. This is out of a T56. I just want to show you a couple teeth, you know, assuming the rest were okay, whether or not you could clean it up, reuse it or not. If we take a look at this tooth, you know, that little indent here, not a big deal. It's on the top edge. Uh, that could be cleaned up. Same with this one right here. I mean, it's it's very minimal. Um, but this one right here, that's, that's almost getting into the root and the contact patch of the tooth. This can be kind of tricky because depending on how many times it's been, you know, rebuilt or cleaned up, how many miles it has on it, if it's got a few chips, in some cases it's best to just replace it because there could be very fine cracks within the gear. And, you know, to take that chance, uh, you know, that that's on you if you wanna take that chance. But I always try to be as thorough as I can be when rebuilding this because nobody wants to do this stuff twice. And if I bring it to the front, you can notice that there's some tool marks here. It looks like somebody uh, went through and and took off that burr, that sharp edge on these teeth. Sometimes from the factory, they'll do this. Uh, sometimes I get counter shafts or gears and they'll have a nice sharp edge there and they won't be cleaned up. They won't deburr the uh, sharp edges on the teeth. And that's pretty critical. You wanna do that. It's just good practice uh, to make sure that you have a nice long lasting transmission. And this looks like somebody went through here and did that. Um, if you look at, it's hard to get the light on here to see, but kind of at that angle, you can see, um, it looks like that's probably a factory 
mark uh, when they deburred this. And that looks like something that was done later. Same idea with these teeth, no sharp edges. You don't want any damage within the root. Like I said, I'll leave a manual below. I'll leave the page where it tells you acceptable chips versus non-acceptable chips. And you can make that uh, decision for yourself. Well, I hope that clears some things up and helps you determine whether or not you need to replace a part for your transmission. I got a lot of people wanting to replace parts that don't need to be replaced. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. If you guys found this video useful, if you learned anything, please hit that like, subscribe. I got more videos on these Tremec and five to six speeds. If you guys need parts or a rebuild, I'll leave my link below. It really helps uh, support the channel. And I'll see you guys on the next one.